One more day until Tennessee takes on NC State in the Duke's Mayo Classic. Keys to victory, score predictions, and one of your favorite guests. All that here on a Friday Locked On Balls. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good Friday morning, everybody. Welcome into it, your Friday morning edition of Lockdown Balls. Appreciate you guys making Lockdown Balls your first listen, your first watch each and every single day. Shout out Game Time for being a part of the show. Create an account. Use the promo code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. I am your host, Eric Kane. We got a busy one to get into today. We're going to have an abbreviated segment number one here because Buggy Bentley joins me for segments two and three, and we go off the rails. We have a whole lot of fun. Just two guys chit-chatting it up, having fun. I, I, that's the that's the scene I feel like that's appealing to us, right? I mean, it, what what a, what a sports – and I always thought about this in radio. I'm going off the rails here, segment one. That's a good start, right? Uh, radio show should always be – and I grew up in radio. Radio show should always be two guys at the bar having a drink talking sports, okay? And, and that's kind of how I try to do this show a lot of the times. But it's hard to do that when it's, it's me talking to a microphone by myself. When I have friends on or when I have a guest on who turn into friends like Boogie has – uh, I get to do that, and I, I think you guys are going to enjoy our, our conver- conversation and our analysis and our thoughts on last week and, of course, looking ahead to this week. So, Boogie Bentley, Locked on Talking Balls, coming up in segments two and three. Going to get keys to the game, score predictions, all that and more. Getting you set for Tennessee and NC State here in segment number one. Appreciate you guys, as always, for making us your number one listen here on a, uh, a weekday morning. Okay, so, keys to victory. We've talked a lot about this throughout the week. Uh, for me, it's simple. It comes down to comes down to three things, okay? Number one, it's going to be push the tempo offensively. Yeah, a lot of teams that don't play Tennessee on a regular basis, they get smacked in the face by this tempo, and it takes them a quarter or so to kind of settle in and say, okay, I I, I know what it is. I expect it now. That, you know, Let's try to stop it or try to get used to it. You know, um, There's been clips out there, and we talked a little bit about it on yesterday's show, and, and the player, I forgot who it was, but nothing that he said, you know, I could take it as a slight uh, to Tennessee or to Tennessee fans at all. NC State has been trying all week long and trying to make it some impossible scenarios. You heard the guys talking yesterday about you know moving the ball from one hash to the next, just saying, okay, well, we got to run over there now, trying to make it harder than what it is. I mean, I got news for you. Nothing is going to be harder than going up against Tennessee's tempo in the game. You can try to replicate it. You can try to duplicate it. You can try to do scout teams, multiple scout teams going at once. Nothing is going to be harder. You simply can't replicate it in practice. You can't, especially after that, after that first first down. So Tennessee needs to smack them in the face with the tempo early and often offensively. And I think when you do that, uh, it's going to be it's going to be hard to hard to come back if you're NC State and you get down early. Number two, in terms of some storylines here for me in this one. LB's got to get physical on Concepcion. I'll talk about it with Boogie here in a moment. I've talked about it all week long. I won't spend a whole lot of time on it. Concepcion, Casey Concepcion is the playmaker, is the dude for NC State. He's the guy, okay? He's got to go out there. If you play man-to-man coverage on him, often you're going to lose more times than not. So underneath, for the slants, for the drags, for the um, skinny post even, you've got to get your hands on him. Get your hands on him. Knock him off his route. Get your hands on him. Make him cry to the official that this should be called pass interference, okay? You get called for P.I., all right, let's settle down, let's regroup a little bit, okay? Let's let's not be so obvious about it. But, hey, we're linebackers, okay? We're not defensive backs. Get our hands on there, hold them a little bit, mess up the timing is all I'm asking for. LBs are going to be critical in defending Casey Concepcion, even if he's not their guy. If you if you got this hook curl over here to push to push to the flat there, um, and he comes in your zone, get hands on him, get hands on him. Okay, uh, it's easier said than done. I recognize that, but I think the LBs are going to have to help out uh, their defensive backs in defending Casey Concepcion because he's he's a whole lot. Number three, make a statement. Okay, uh, make a statement. Yes, Tennessee is a touchdown and a half favorite, meaning or touch a seven and a half point favorite. Um, Tennessee should win this game. Tennessee's favorite to win this game. Tennessee should win this game. I'm picking Tennessee to win this game, but you better go out there and make a statement like, hey, everything you saw last week in Chattanooga, yeah, we're that exciting, okay? All this talk you've heard about Nico, yeah, he's the real deal. Yeah, you got to put it together over the course of a season. I recognize that, but go out there against a top 25 team, okay, against a team that also has college football aspirations with the 12 team college football playoff and punch them in the face. And don't let up. As Nico said last week, step on it. Don't let up. Okay? Make a statement to the nation. 
make a statement going into SEC play here in a couple weeks. Say like, okay, you want to talk about our schedule being weak, even though we play Georgia and, and Alabama every year? Okay, well, NC State, top 25 team, let's beat you by three scores. Let's beat you by 21 plus. Go out there and make a statement. Don't just win. Go out there and make a statement, in my opinion. That's what you need to do. Uh, got a whole lot coming up with Boogie Bentley. Segments two and three, host of Locked On or host of Talking Vols. That is coming up next. We continue on here with a Friday edition, getting you set for Tennessee and NC State. This is Locked On Vols. I want to tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just like another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't use other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional over at LinkedIn Jobs. Post your job for free today, okay, at linkedin.com slash locked on college. I want to say that one more time, a little bit less awkward, okay? LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Well, terms and conditions, they do apply. So big shout out to uh, LinkedIn as always. And I also want to give a shout out to a proud sponsor of the, of, of the show. That is Home Field Apparel, the exclusive apparel sponsor of Lockdown Balls. Football season is here. You can smell it in the air if you're heading out to Neyland Stadium this fall, next uh, next Saturday for Kent State. Be sure to be decked out in style thanks to Home Field Apparel. Can't miss kickoff 2024 campaign. You get football boxes, coaches jackets, bomber jackets, and so much for in these football backs, boxes. It contains three never-before-seen items for the University of Tennessee that are not available anywhere else. Curated uh, for fans to have new gear to wear all season long, suitable for all weather conditions. The Platinum Box VIPs will receive additional exclusive items. A new hat, new koozie, guaranteeing you 20%, this is the Platinum Pass, 20% off nearly access to Tennessee football, early access to Tennessee football's releases throughout the season, no more missing out on Hopefield because it's sold out. You get early release, 20% off on early release with the Platinum Pass. It's valid through or, or it's valid starting August the 9th, so you had some time. Go ahead and get it because they're going to sell out this season for sure. Go to homefieldapparel.com to get started today. Homefield Apparel, uh, it's got incredibly comfortable, officially licensed apparel focused on vintage college designs. they got some beautiful designs about the University of Tennessee. Again, get started today. Go to homefieldapparel.com. It's old news now, Boogie, but that's pretty good uh, little opening act on Saturday against Chattanooga, right? It's exactly what you want, right? You go out, domination, 69 to 3. I think I think when the common phrase you're hearing all week long is, well, it was just Chattanooga. I don't that that's kind of what you want to hear, right? Because that means you went out, you dominated, and it, it's it's been fun this week because it was just Chattanooga, but I've seen so many national analysts, guys like Aaron Murray, David Pollock, Urban Meyer, all these national guys, Roman Harper. Roman Harper, you can take a, a quote and run with it. Better. Better than Peyton Manning, better than Hendon Hooker. Like all these national guys are saying, I get it. It was just Chattanooga, but if you can't see how great Nico is, then I don't know what you're watching. Yeah, I think I I joined like 17 podcasts this week, and I think on one of them I said, yeah, I mean, disclaimer, just Chattanooga. And I was like, I'm, let me stop right there. I have said that phrase probably 200 times this week. But still, I mean, what he was doing – the throws that he was making, I mean, hitting Dante Thornton and stride down the sideline was just beautiful because hadn't seen that in a while. Uh, but the throw to Brazel was his best throw of the day. Holden stays up the seam. He didn't make the catch, but oh my gosh, I mean, over the linebacker in front of the safety. Now, you know, Alabama's and Florida's and even NC State's, those linebackers and safety is going to be so much better. So um, I don't think you're going to see that type of precision every single game. However, I mean, nothing that we saw. I mean, the hype train's just full speed ahead. It's crashing through a wall. I mean, there's nothing slowing this down. I mean, that was quite the debut. And, um, I mean, he, go ahead and give him the Heisman, right? No, I'm just kidding. But, I mean, it was it was awesome. It was it was really, really cool to see. It's different. If you come out and you have questions, right? It's Chattanooga, and it's like, well, he missed a couple of deep balls. He did this. He did that. But nobody's questioning anything. I think Hubs had one of the best quotes I've heard all week when he said, 
that would have been good if it was routes on air. I get it. It was just Chattanooga. That would have been impressive. The ball location, hitting guys in stride, yep. would have been impressive if it was routes on air. So I don't care if it was just Chattanooga. All these national guys are taking notice for a reason. Where, where are you at? On the hype train, because I was listening to a podcast. I don't. I, it may even. I don't even know who it was. I can't even remember. I've listened to so much stuff this week, and they were talking about the Nico hype train. And on a train, there's a conductor and there's a caboose. And Coach Jay over on the Talking Balls Network, he's been driving that train all offseason. He's been driving that train last year Is when Joe Milton train, was the quarterback. The way, Buggy, I think so. You do it like this right here. And see, I went up to the front. And I hit Coach Jay in the back of the head, and I threw him off the train. I said, I'm taking over, and I'm driving. I'm driving the train. Where are you at? Are, are you full steam? We laugh about Heisman. I think Nico's going to win a Heisman, and I have good reason to believe that. I've been hearing it from, from people that have been around Nico since he was in middle school, and now everybody's getting a chance to see it. Are, where are you at? Are you up front? You you trying to get club me in the back of the head? I, I'm, I'm first class. I, I'm, I'm behind you. I'm not, I'm not sitting up there driving the tram. I'm in first class, though. I mean, I'm, I'm high on Nico. I'm, how can he not be? Uh everything he possesses, um, seeing the way that he went about his business last year, seeing the way he handled everything as a recruit. Um, dude's had all eyes on him for years. He, brought, I mean, he's, he's had all eyes on him his entire life in terms of the, the football and volleyball scene as well. I, hard not to root for the guy. I will say this in terms of the Heisman talk. I mean, I, he's on the odds for sure. I mean, saw a graphic this morning and, um, of course, what he did in week one, even though it was Chattanooga, is not going to slow that down. I, I do want to – Iowa – it's a pretty solid defense. I, I do think there's better defenses in the SEC, even though what the stats say. He torched Iowa on the ground, at least. Didn't have to do much through the air. That was great to see. Of course, what do you think against Chattanooga? We're going to see NC State. It'll be a, a little bit of a better challenge, but I do want to see him go into SEC play for a couple weeks and see how he puts you know game up after game up, which I'm expecting it's going to be solid and fine and great and exciting and explosive. Um, but I, I'm going to hold off on the Heisman talk uh, until then. But nah, man, I'm first class, dude. How can you not be first class? Like, I mean, there's there's just so much to like. And, and again, I, I've said this about a million times, too, and people, Joe defenders are, are all over me saying I hate Joe Milton, where I'm pretty sure I've been higher on Joe than almost anybody the last year. Um, not trying to slam Joe Milton, but, I mean, it just, it just looks different, you know? Because I've, I've got the same stuff. And I was the biggest Joe defender forever, forever. I love Joe Milton. And, and you, you can still talk about this thing and still love Joe and, and appreciate what he did for this football program. He's a VFL. What a great teammate. What a great guy. He's but on you, an NFL roster. I mean, he's obviously yeah. got talent. Like you know. And if you look at the stats, his, his numbers were pretty good last year. But the, the And that's what I'm trying to say. Not try, I'm trying to cut you off here. It's like everybody thinks just because you went from 2022, which – let me remind everybody here, 45, six points per game. Um, number one offense in the country in total yards as well. Belitnikoff award winner. Should have been a freaking Heisman finalist. Bogus. I went on a rant the other day about Stetson Bennett. Two years later, doesn't matter, but I went on a rant about it anyway. We're not going to do that here. Um, I, you went from one of historically the best seasons in Tennessee football history to 2023. And sure, it was a step back. Yes, it was. Middle of the field was non-existent. The quarterback play was a step back. But you look at the stats of what Joe Milton still did and compare that to some of the the 15 years we were out in the desert wandering around. I mean, on this high horse and, and it, the expectation, it's like, yes, that's not the standard. It's not good enough. But, boy, you think that's horrible and the worst thing ever? Do you not remember a couple years ago? So, sorry. Go, go if, ahead. If there's, if there's, well, that's a good point. If there's yeah. no Hendo Cinco, if Hendon Hooker never comes here and Josh Ibel comes in and he goes and gets Joe Milton and Joe Milton's his quarterback and Joe goes out and wins eight, nine games and then you go sign Nico and Nico comes in, we're all looking back at Joe and going, man, that's the guy. That was the foundation. That's the guy that helped us turn the corner and then Nico came in and he was he was the golden child. He's the guy that led us to the promised land. But we look at Joe in a different light. But you're sandwiching Joe Milton in between Hendon Hooker and Nico Iamaliava, that's a tough, that's a tough place for Joe Milton to be. But but talking about Nico and this this offense looking different, you know, it's it's funny you bring up the bowl game. 100 percent in the red zone, used his legs more than he did his arm. Guess what? That offense was still more of Joe's offense. You're, they that that coaching staff schemed up this offense for what they were comfortable to give Joe. They weren't comfortable going over the middle of the field. They just weren't. That's why the offense looked different. So when Nico came in for that bowl game, it still wasn't really Nico's offense. Yeah, they tweaked some things. They changed some things. Now you've got a full offseason to prepare and, and install the offense that Nico's going to run. And that's, again, what I love about this coaching staff. They're going to utilize their personnel. They're going to set them up the best to go out and have success. So this offense looks different. But you go out and you beat Iowa in the bowl game, guess what everybody says? 
that Iowa defense wasn't very good. Well, that's weird because going into that game, everybody was telling me they're a top 15 defense. They're elite. Nico's going to struggle. He goes out, wins 35 nothing. All of a sudden, they're not that good. He goes out against Chattanooga. He dominates. He does everything he's supposed to do. He looks the part. He sets records. And people say, yeah, but Boogie, it doesn't matter. It was Chattanooga. Really? Pretty sure Peyton played Chattanoogas. I'm pretty sure that Condridge Holloway played teams that weren't good. I'm pretty sure that Casey Claus and T. Martin, Eric Ainge, whoever you want to talk about, they all played teams like that. And guess who came in and set the record in his first ever start inside of Neyland Stadium? When he goes out and dominates NC State coming up on Saturday, they're not going to be that good. When he goes and beats Oklahoma on the road, well, they're not a real SEC team. Florida, Alabama, they keep moving the goalposts, and Nico's going to keep on slinging darts and breaking records. So buggle up. And enjoy the ride. That's all I'll Literally, say. I'm a little make, fired up. I'm a little fired I, up. This I, I love it. I mean, why, why not? It's Friday. We're, we're sprinting into the weekend. We're sprinting to Charlotte. I love it. Yeah. It, when he goes out and dominates NC State, um, if he does, which I believe he'll have a good game, it's, oh, well, they lost Peyton Willis. That whole linebacker group's, you know, gone. Oh, well, one of their starting safeties is not there. You know, it, it, there's always going to be a goalpost move. I think if you go out there and do that on the road against uh, uh, Oklahoma, it's really important. There's not much you can say about that one, but if he does against Alabama, oh, Nick Saban ain't there. Nick Saban ain't exactly. there. That's Georgia. what I said the other night. Nick Saban will be the excuse. <laughs> George is like, oh, they're all in the NFL. You know, it's like, <laughs> and sooner or later, guys, I mean, you just kind of have to realize. But again, I want to see Nico, which I fully expect to see him doing things like we saw Saturday um, against SEC competition. That's like the only thing we haven't seen yet. Again, just two starts. I know small sample size, but, you know, Iowa's defense, I respect the heck out of Iowa's defense, and I don't care. Sure, maybe it's not as athletic as some of the defenses in the SEC. You allow four rushing touchdowns in 12 games? I don't care who you are. That's really good. And then this guy rushes for three in, in one game, two on design quarterback runs. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah, the, the whole bringing this whole conversation to a close here, like the hype train, it ain't slowing down, nor should it. Um, and I'm excited to see what he looks like Saturday at NC State, against NC State. And I think in that game, man, another thing for him that's his, his best friend is and Dylan Sampson, hat trick. He loves opening day, right? I mean, he got the hat trick in the first half, over 125 yards rushing or whatever. Dylan Sampson, I think if he stays healthy, he's going to get more touches in the offense this year. I think the dude can be like an all-SEC back. Yeah, I think he's go definitely going over 1,000. Again, if he stays healthy, definitely yeah. going over 1,000. Can he hit 1,200? I, I think because he is – I think he is going to get more carries than Jalen Wright got last year, and I think that's a big part of this thing. And I think the running game is going to be a key coming up on Saturday against NC State. I don't want to bury the lead. I don't know if that's where you want to go coming up. But no, I, I, I think, I think too, when you talk about Nico and you look at Aaron Murray breaking down the film and the play that everybody's talking about, right, where he just fits it in over the heads of the linebackers, and they're talking about those linebackers driving back 10 yards, 12 yards, 13, 14 yards – who do you think is going to feast on that? I, I think Dylan Sampson could have a field day on Saturday against NC State, a team who who last week against Western Carolina, say what you will about what went down in that game, the, the way that Western Carolina was able to run the football, they averaged over six yards a carry against NC State. I, Tennessee's offensive line is going to push them around. I was not impressed with their defensive line at all. I think the running game could be a key. And, and I, I, we've talked about this before. This offense, man, sometimes the, the passing game sets up the rushing attack. Sometimes the rushing attack sets up the passing attack. But I think Tennessee has a chance to run the football successfully on Saturday. We, us in the football world, we like to call that complimentary football. Yeah. That is uh, to a Buzzword. T. Buzzword. To a T. Love it. Um, now everybody makes fun of, uh, was it was it Butch that said that everybody made fun of? Like, no, that that's a, that's a real thing. People actually talk about that. Uh, yeah, let's get into NC State. You so rudely brought it up here in segment one, but um, when we come back in segment two here, or segment three to conclude the show, let's let's dive into NC State because uh, I got some thoughts about that Western Carolina game as well, and I'm sure you will agree with me. What does Tennessee need to do to win this game and start 2-0 and here in the football season? All that's coming up here as we continue on with a Friday edition of Locked on Vols. More with Boogie Bentley. That is coming up next. I want to tell you guys about a proud sponsor of the show. That is our friends over at Game Time. Game Time the new has a new feature called the Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals and great seats, so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of other tickets. Okay, what is Game Time? It's an app that you can download to your phone. Okay, you buy tickets on that app to events in your area. Right now, it's football time in Tennessee. Okay. Yeah, they're in Charlotte this weekend, but they're going to be coming back. Okay, Kent State's coming up. 
Uh, then you hit the road for a little bit. Then you hit that stretch there in October and November. You got Florida, you got Alabama, you got Kentucky, you got Mississippi State, I believe, after that. Nonetheless, a lot of times, a lot of fun times to be had over at Neyland Stadium. You can buy those tickets on the Game Time app. If you find a, t- a ticket cheaper in the same section on another app than the one you found at Game Time, they're going to credit you 110% of that price it's called the lowest price guarantee you get views from your seat get the game time ticket coverage as well they got the most flexible and best customer service in the ticketing industry all this and more is over at the game time app all in pricing as well where this toggling feature shows you the total up front no surprise fees no hidden fees at checkout if you are like me and you're a procrastinator sometimes the tickets get cheaper the closer to the event and they're even selling tickets an hour after the event starts it can be sports it can be concerts comedy shows whatever buy those tickets over on the game time app download the game time app put in the promo code locked on college for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account put in the redeem code locked on college for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guarantee what time is it It's game time. Let me start off by saying this, and I've said it several times this week. Uh, NC State is better. NC State's much better than what it showed against Western Carolina, okay? I think NC State, if they stay healthy, they'll be a pretty good unit offensively in, you know, weeks five, six, seven, and be a force to be reckoned with. Um, However, I'm not going to ignore the tape. You brought up the linebackers and how Dylan Sampson might be able to have a day and all that. Let, let's let's take it to that line of scrimmage, man. The two things that I want to point out. Number one, on paper, Western Carolina, or excuse me, uh, NC State's offensive line should be a strength. There's an NFL prospect there. They brought in a transfer from Notre Dame. They returned four guys with starting experience. It's a pretty good unit. Should be pretty good. Okay. I don't care who you're playing. I don't care what the... I mean, they allowed nine TFLs to Western Carolina in week one. Nine TFLs. That is inexcusable, okay? And then number two, NC State could not run the football. Jordan Waters broke free for a 50-yard touchdown run on one of those, really boosted his stats to get him over 100 yards. NC State could not run the football. So what I think looks like a pretty good unit, what everybody thought was going to be a good unit, and again, it still can be. That's just one week was not impressive in week one against an inferior opponent in Western Carolina. So, Boogie, the Tennessee defensive line, we talked about it many, many times. Been years back, go get to work, man. It, You know, judging on last week, it could be a fun, fun day at the office for Rodney Gardner's group. Yeah, one, one of my favorite things. Of course, everybody after after the Chattanooga game, where was James Pierce? Why, why, why was James Pierce? Like, everybody thought James Pierce was going to go out week one and have 17 sacks. It's going to be EA Sports College Football 25. He's going to win the Heisman. I've seen that all over Twitter. Everybody went in the Heisman with James Pierce on that game because he's a cheat code. Uh, well, he played 10 snaps. Right, It's Friday. Everybody knows that by now. Everybody knows where James Pierce was. One of my favorite things I heard was hearing that when Rodney Garner told James Pierce, pack it in, you're done. At halftime, James Pierce was not happy. I love that. Let's make him angry. He has been licking his chops all week, ready to go out here and show the world what he can do against NC State. I I think Tennessee whips NC State on the line of scrimmage offensively and defensively. There's one thing that's true about Rodney Garner's defense. They are going to get after the run game. and they Look at the difference, right? Western Carolina, Chattanooga, Tennessee held Chattanooga to what, two yards? per attempt on the ground. You look at Western Carolina, they ran the football for six yards per attempt. I think Tennessee's defensive line is going to be a strength in this football game, but I also think their offensive line, and and like you said, when you look at it on paper, and and that's what talking season is, right? Leading up to the, all you can do is look at paper. When you see that they're returning a a possible first round draft pick on the offensive line and returning four starters, and they go to the portal and add a center from Notre Dame, that should be a strength. I think Tennessee's defensive line gets after it. I think they are going to force NC State to beat them through the air. And again, talking season. Everybody's hyping up Grayson McCall. He had almost 90 touchdowns at Coastal Carolina. Wait, where? where? Coastal Carolina. The last time I checked, this ain't the Sun Belt. Ask Sun Belt Billy down there in Florida. This ain't the (laughs) Sun Belt. You force Grayson McCall to beat you. And then we're going to see what this secondary is made of. I I love the fact that Ricky Gibson's back. I think that's going to be big for this football team. How do you stop Concepcion? Let me ask you, how do you stop him? Nine catches, 121 yards, three touchdowns a week ago. He was the guy, again, on paper, all offseason, everybody's talking about elite speed. They're going to move him around. Do you say, hey, hey, true freshman, Boo Carter, hey, uh, you, you should have been at your prom a few months ago. 
do you put him on Concepcion and tell him to follow him all over the field, whether he's in the slot, out wide, in the backfield? What, what's your game plan to stop him? First of all, I, based on some of the comments that I received both to my phone and messages and by word of mouth, I bet you guys are loving today's show much more than yesterday's show. I'll leave it at that. Number two, no, to answer your question. Um, not that Boo can't handle it. I just I don't think he's ready for that type of role right now. Okay, game number two, he made a lot of freshman stupid mistakes in game one against Chattanooga, and you know what? That's okay. You know why? Because again, he should have been at his prom when he was playing in the spring game. He's young. He made a lot of great plays. I love him coming off the edge blitzing. Whoo! He looks good doing that. He's gonna be a good one. Okay, mm -hmm. I am not having him follow and having him trail Concepcion the entire game. That's or Harrison for that matter as well. Um, I'm just not gonna ask that now. At times, sure. Um, but what, and I think I said this in the Rockets at round table and it sounds so silly to say it out loud, but I mean, it's gotta be a team effort. It really, really does. So if you are playing in man coverage, you have got to get hands on him when he's crossing with the drags. If he's got, if he's coming here on a slant from the slot, you got to get that out there and collision him, knock him off his route. Okay. If you're playing in zone, you, you can't just point him out and let him and you know, pass him to the next guy. You got to go and carry him to the next guy a lot of this stuff might not be making sense but you know if you're from a defensive perspective when you're in a zone coverage sure you have this zone this area but when someone comes in your area it turns into man you go up and you get that you don't just see him like oh that's my zone if he catches i gotta make a tackle no you go and you go collision and try not to get called for pass interference my point is get hands on him okay mm. he will go deep sometimes he'll, but a lot of times he'll be in the slot he'll be in the backfield you know, when you got Noah Rogers and Justin Jolie stretching, they like to get him the ball in space underneath. So I think more than anything, honestly, the linebackers need to rough him up a little bit, okay? So Keenan Peely, Aaron Carter, Jeremiah Thielen, or Caleb Perry need to get hands on him. And then defensive backs, run, rally, make some tackles. He's going to make some plays. He will be the leading receiver. He'll break through for a couple of times. But as long as you don't let him take over the game, I think you're going to be okay. So long, long-winded long how I would defend him, I would call your defense, but those linebackers better be helping and trying to knock him, mess up the timing underneath. Do it until you're called, and when you're called, adjust. I, I love you old linebackers. You and Coach Jay both played linebacker. Of course, you played in college. Coach Jay coaches linebackers. Every time I ask you all how to stop somebody, rough them up, put hands on them. That's <laughs> always your answer, always. Be physical. You going to let me in on the inside joke? What's the inside joke that went down yesterday? What, what What's going on with you in the comment section that I don't know about around here? Oh, oh, oh no, I, I, had, uh, I had some um, – uh, I did a crossover show yesterday. And, you know, it typically when it comes when crossovers – People don't like the other hosts that, that, that come on. And, uh, oh, yeah, no, they, they hate me here. They hate me here. I'm used to it. <laughs> no, no, they're going to love you today. Uh, the, the guys yesterday, they were good guys. They were fun. We had a good time. Uh, a couple of comments that I knew that got, I knew when they said it, I was like, okay, that's going to get the comment section riled up. So, But like based off that and then just you just getting after it today, a little bit of a difference. So that's why, that's why I made that comment. Oh, uh, I, I never know what anybody's talking about around here. Hey, shout out to all you guys that don't like me if you're still listening. Uh, still tune in every Friday. I'll be here. I'll be here. So I can't wait to see your comments uh, about me in the, in the comment section. It's always a good time. I love being insulted. Makes me happy. Makes every, me know I'm winning. Every single Friday. All right. Um, What else, man? We, I mean, Grayson McCall, I think I think's solid, right? I mean, you made some good points. I, we got to see it uh, here on the Power 4 level. I think he started off week last week led that first interception led to the first scoring drive for Western Carolina. I think it'll be okay. We talked about KC Concepcion talked about the offensive line defensively for NC state. There's a lot of new pieces there. I think they're trying to figure it out. I just, there, there's no way that again, I've been saying it for weeks and maybe now it's not a bold take, but I think Tennessee wins this one by two scores. At least um, I'm probably going to have Tennessee winning this one. I think, I think I picked it at 42, 27, somewhere around there. So Tennessee covers, hammer the over at 60 and a half. I, I think this is a game that Tennessee goes out there and handles business. I mean, it, sh it should not be a close one, in my opinion. I, I've been saying two scores pretty much all offseason. I thought Tennessee would win by two scores. And to show you how much value I put into that Chattanooga game, I, I think Tennessee blows NC State out. I, I think Nico, it's almost like I wasn't believing it myself, even though I was hearing all the right things from the right people that I trust about how good Nico is. You still want to see it, right? And then you see it in the bowl game, and then you sit here all offseason making excuses. Uh, well, he, he was good on the ground 
Was he as elite throwing the ball? Did the offense really look different? You're, you're kind of almost trying to talk yourself yeah, out of believing. With that defense in that bowl game, playing the way it did, James Pierce responsible for 14 points by yes. himself. And then the way they run game, you didn't have to be – Superman through the air. Continue. Sorry. It's 35 to nothing. And I'm telling myself, I'm still, you're still having those conversations with yourself. But what I saw in the Ch Chattanooga game, and then what I see people that know way more about football than I do, like Urban Meyer and Aaron Murray and David Pollock and all these guys gushing over it. When is the last time the national media gushed over somebody at Tennessee after a Chattanooga game? Usually nobody's talking no. about Tennessee after a Chattanooga game. I've seen it. I've heard it. I believe it, and I think Tennessee goes out and dominates. And I, th I think Saturday will be interesting because NC State, with that 3-3-5 defense, they want to create confusion, bring different blitzes. They Maybe they'll stack the line and drop everybody. Maybe they'll bring everybody. I, I think they're going to try to create confusion, and it, it, it'll be neat to see how Nico handles that mentally, his reads, his progressions, how he responds to some of these blitzes. This is going to be a different football team. It's another test, right? It's another step forward. We talked last week how the stakes get higher every week. Chattanooga, you did what you were supposed to do. NC State, competition gets a little bit higher. If Nico goes out and dominates, I picked 42-17. to 17. I think the defense dominates as well. Uh, and then next week you got another tune-up, warm-up game, and then you go get ready for Oklahoma that game's going to be fun. But first, got to, you know, coach speak, take them one week at a time, right? We're fans. We can talk about the Georgia game if y'all want to. Whatever. I'm here for it. And then, of course, you got Oklahoma in two weeks, and then you got, you know, the rest of the SEC slate. I, I guess what I'm saying here to end this thing up, like, I mean, you know, we talked about it all offseason, right? You know, can Tennessee be a college football playoff team? Can Tennessee do this? Yeah, I mean, it's all in front of you. This is the test number one of the semester right here, right? I understand it's week two of the season, but, like, this is that first – big time game because NC State also has those aspirations and theoretically they think that they you know if they win this game that there's a path to the college football playoffs so um Oklahoma game is going to be bigger okay but this one is the biggest of the season right now because you lose this one boy you are setting yourself up to have to climb a steep steep mountain it's still very much possible thanks to the 12 team playoff but um you lose this game and, and and you're setting yourself up to have to play catch up in my opinion so win this game and yeah, you're off and running towards the college football playoffs, at least for another week. All right, Boogie, appreciate you as always, man. What, what do you guys got coming up uh, on the uh, Talking Vols channel this weekend around Tennessee football? Every Friday morning, 10 a.m., make Locked On Vols your first listen of the day. Get your coffee. Get your second cup of coffee. Come on over to the Talking Vols Network Friday mornings, 10 a.m. Me and Coach Jay going to get you ready for kickoff. Tomorrow morning, we're going to drop a video bright and early. Early that morning, it's going to be a game day feature. We're going to give you some keys to the game. Coach Rice, he's a high school offensive coach. He's going to give you what NC State's offense is trying to do. Coach Jay, defensive analyst at the Division Three level, college football analyst, uh, on the defensive side of the ball, he's going to give you what NC State likes to do on defense. They're both going to give you some keys to the game. Tailgate show with the fans an hour before kickoff and then live immediately after the game. Hopefully celebrating. Kaner over here speaking a loss to NC State into existence. We don't do that on the Talking Balls Network. Well, I, mean, I was about to slam you. You slam me. I'm going to slam you back. I mean, what do you even do on your show? You got two coaches Nothing. there. I mean, that's what I do. I do this. I go, oh, 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 smash the thumbs up and share. Blah, 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 blah. And then much, I throw right. it to those guys. Surround yourself with people that know more about yes, you. Absolutely. And you will be successful in that. Absolutely. All right. We call this little segment the uh, Locked On Talking Balls every Friday during football season, segments two and three of the show. Boogie, had a blast, man. Let's, uh, I think we're both expecting a blowout win for Tennessee. Let's see it, buddy. All right. Let's go. All right, that is Boogie Bentley, and that's going to do it here for this edition of Locked on Vols. It's been a fun week, okay? We talked a lot about NC State, uh, getting ready for Tennessee and the Dukes Mayo Bowl. We recapped Chattanooga. We talked a lot of Nico Iamaliava. We've had some guests on the show. we got some unique perspectives. Appreciate you guys for making Locked on Vols your first stop every single morning, making it your first listen and your first watch. If you're going to the game, be safe. I'm going to be in Charlotte for uh, tonight and um, obviously all day tomorrow and for the football game. So if you see me around Charlotte, I'm going to be, I'm going to be – uh, out and about, checking out the high school scenes a little bit. So um, excited about that. Say hello. And certainly, um, I think we're all looking forward to a big Tennessee win this weekend. So we'll be back on. I will do my best to get something up late Friday night, early Sunday morning. Um, it might not be much because I'm going to be you know traveling. I'll do my best to try to get something up before Monday's show, but we're going to hit this from every single angle on Monday morning. Appreciate you guys as always. Thank you so much. This is Locked on Vols.